Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the third installment of Reanimated. I'm Vlad St. Valentine, and with me is our hostess with the Ramostis, Caden Ramos. How's it going? Hey, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm fucking great. How was your Halloween? Dude, this was the first year we didn't get a single trick-or-treater. Really? Yeah, not one. Wow. Which is a mixed bag, because, like... On the one hand, I didn't get a single trick or treater, and I love passing out candy, and it was like super depressing because it's like Halloween's gone instead. And like, mind you, we only got like two or three trick or treaters a year before this anyway. Yeah, like it's people go to people who live in this neighborhood go to better neighborhoods to trick or treat. I understand that. I understand that I I live in that neighborhood. Yeah, but still zero, and I, it's probably the COVID thing, I guess. But like, goose egg. Yeah, well, at least you get all that candy. That is the the good side of this coin. I did get to gorge myself on Kit Kats and Reese's with glow in the dark wrappers, <laughs> so I can see my shame even at night when I try to escape it and cry myself to sleep. <laughs> when you need to go to the bathroom, you just gotta shake them all off. <laughs> just to, a trail everywhere I go, just of glow in the dark wrappers. But again, easy to get around. At night. I save a ton in nightlights. So Friday the thirteenth. Friday the 13th. Well, we're waiting. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So Jason is iconic, right? Yes. And Jason will always be iconic. But can we all come to the consensus? The first movie sucks. The first movie definitely sucks. It <laughs> is. It, it was more of a slog than having to watch. I don't know anything else. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, I realized that we were, we were early on in our, our movie reviewing and watching careers here on YouTube, but uh, <laughs> this was a fucking like, what, like, and it's not like this is the first time we've watched Friday the 13th. It's not like we didn't know what we were going into, but it's been years since I've watched it for this very reason. Like, I mean, like, it's not like we don't love uh, Jason here. I'm wearing merchandise, but yeah. I'm much more in love with the, with this guy over here, his movies were much better. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, this Friday Thirteenth is never gonna get nominated or preserved in the Smithsonian. No, well, I mean, right. So Friday Thirteenth was supposed to be a mixture of like Halloween and meatballs, right? Yeah. And I will say that while the characters did not have much character to them, like they were really fleshed out, the little bits of them we did get were more likable than the characters in Halloween. Yes. Like, you know, the girl doing the, the Liz Taylor impersonation in the mirror, you know, that was just kind of funny and it was yeah. natural. It's something yeah. you would do on your own. Some kind of personality quirk. Yeah. You know, just, just a little, you know, a little time with these people and the, like, and, and, and much against what everyone makes it out is like, the, again, they weren't intending for the virgin girl to go through it. They didn't really consider it. Alice. Is that the main girl's name? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. We only get the, the flow chart out of fucking character names for these stupid movies. Cause they don't matter. Like, you don't spend enough time with them to care and or remember their names. No, you spend more time with them in Friday the Thirteenth, which is why I think they're a little bit more likable than you do in Halloween. Yeah, God, I don't remember anyone's name in any of these movies. Um, we're gonna have to get the IMDb out. Hold on, I forgot we were even looking up. I was making fun of stuff so much. <laughs> any other movies <laughs> names and the characters? Because again, don't matter. Kevin Bacon is. Jack, right? And that's just because he plays Jack in like every fucking thing. Yeah. I think there's six different movies where he's his Jack in his <laughs> name. I'm not don't don't ask me to name him. Oh yeah, talking about the uh going back to the uh, this thought I had was starting uh, and then derailed myself on about the sex and the vice thing uh being unintentional just as it was in Halloween, you know, people found social mores where I think one of the producers, like people were kind of found these things where there was no preaching intended. Yeah. Uh, Cause they assumed, you know, Alice, you know, was, wasn't a good girl, you know, like people interpret her. Oh, she was the good girl. She was the one having sex. So she's the one who survived. It's like, well, I'm sure she had previous relationships and she was playing strip poker with the rest of them. She yeah. was like, she's the one who perked up and she's like, I don't want to play Monopoly. And the other chick's like strip Monopoly. She's like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Strip Monopoly. Like, yeah. She's like, yeah, she was all for it. Yeah, and she's like busting out that. It's like she's like just so and so lead the grass. Fucking Alice knew exactly where that fucking weed was. She was marking where that shit was the second it showed up. All right, so uh, she wasn't a good girl. She was a normal person. Yeah, and that's what they were likable. Yeah, they were natural. 
They were a lot of fun, except for the goofy, over the top, slapsticky Ned. Ned and the shooting the bow and arrow at the girl while she was on the archery range. Yeah. Like that's where she's like, you're just going to give me a heart attack. You're so silly. It's like, no, that's fucking crazy. That would yep. be like report him and have him like kicked off and perhaps arrested. I would be fucking infuriated. Like I used to be a camp counselor. This is, this is the one movie I guess I can relate to more than any other. I actually used to be not only a camper, but a camp counselor. And I actually used to run an archery range. No. Oh, okay. And I can say watching someone shoot a bow and an arrow at somebody like that just like made every little bit of me just tense up and go, no, 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 dear God. No, fuck you. Fuck you. You piece of shit. And apparently that was a real shot. And Tom Savini took it. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it even worse. I no, no, there's too much of a yeah. chance. Yeah. I, Tom Savini is a scary son of a bitch. Though. Yeah, he is. It's great. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful makeup in this movie. Because that's all this was. Like, ultimately, they spend a lot of time and they have a lot of long shots because they're trying to build tension and mood. But they don't do it successfully. So it's just boring. Yeah. Unlike Halloween, which which uh, was very successful at building those the, the tension in that mood. In most of this, I was just kind of like, oh, fuck, they've been holding on this scene for way too long. Yeah, man. Uh, this these movies were harder to do than the, than the than the last two, and not only because that's not a remake of the first movie. No, it, it's it's a condition of the first three and a half. Yeah, yeah. There's no little there's no little Tommy, uh, played by a still cute Corey Feldman. Yeah, but what you gonna do? The original movie. <clears throat> And everyone's seen it. The music is only around for the killings. The killings. In this, the lack of music in a lot of it, I think the intention was to feel closer to the scene and more in the moment or whatever. And I don't know if it's just because of where we are now and the things we've seen in film, you know, because I don't remember watching this as much as a child or anything like that. So I don't remember having this, the, you know, just the Jason already exists in the zeitgeist. When we were born. Yeah. You know, I was born in 84. Yeah. 85. So, and we what, already had the iconic look. Yeah. That was already established by the time we were born. So there was never a time in our lives where Jason wasn't the hulking guy with the hockey mask and the, and the machete. Yeah. So going back and watching these as we get older, uh, you know, everyone talks about Betsy Palmer's chilling performance, but honestly it, it comes off kind of goofy now yeah. in retrospect. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Voorhees is a much more effective killer doing it from the shadows and, and striking quickly. Apparently when she, when she wants to make it linger, she's just not so good at it. There's a lot of, all right. <laughs> the first Friday the 13th is a lot of great ideas that almost make it. Yes. <laughs> and then don't. <laughs> I, you know, I, we're sitting here, we're bagging on something that people f feel is iconic. And I'm sure many people feel offended by this, but it's not a, go back and watch it. It's not a good movie. It's, it's really not. No, like I said, dialogue's off. The, you said the shots are overly long. The music doesn't build tension like it needs to. No. Just some of the editing was crap. So, I mean, I, I knew, I knew you were a counselor before. So I got to ask the question is, is, that what really happens with the counselors after all the kids go to sleep? What? Staying up late and playing hymns with half of them and sneaking around and fucking? Yeah. First of all, the most unbelievable part of that was that they were up playing hymns in the first place. <laughs> all right. Had that been reality, they would have been sitting in the chapel. Well, one of them was rolling a blunt. The other one was in a look on the lookout for administrative staff and they were all bitching about the kids. Fair enough. Full disclosure here. <laughs> Fair enough. No, no, I, it's not that. Like, honestly, uh, it's not that, like, well, yeah, people are all fucking out of camp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I, I never, I never had sex with somebody while I was on duty or anything like that, but I know plenty of people who did. So it wasn't like, I can't really speak, you know, for everyone when I say that. No, I, well, I never did it, but no, I always had a girl back home send me letters in the war, from the war. Right. So, like Robbie Morgan, the girl is hitchhiking early on and gets, you know, the expedition exposition yeah. dump that you think is going to probably be our main girl. Cause we're spending so much time with her early on. It was a nice little twist. You know, her dying so early. Cause you're like, Oh shit. Wasn't, wasn't that the protagonist? Yeah. Wasn't, 
Wasn't that the girl we were going to be following the entire time? Yeah. Oh, shit. I will say it was kind of funny when I was watching it. I was like, uh, when she gets the ride from the Enos mm-hmm. at the diner. Yeah. And he helps her from the truck. He just gets a handful of ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just... Double handful, actually. <laughs> it's like, you fucking dirty ass old man. Holy shit. We got, we got girls getting arrows shot at him as part of flirting. And this guy is just like, up here, miss. And he's like the kindly old man. Their relationship is supposed to be sweet and endearing. He just gets a handful of that ass. Like, no, you're just, just helping her up there. Just holding the fanny so she don't fall. Like, all right, whatever, old man. It makes me wonder, like, are these things supposed to be endearing? The way that we like, it's hard to interpret how relationships are portrayed on film and old stuff, the way we view them in today's lens. Cause like I was listening to a Ray Bradbury novel, like on the uh, audio book. Cause I was do that sometimes when I'm, you know, walking around the neighborhood with the dogs and stuff. Yeah. And it was a story about, uh, these humans landing on a planet and they find the city that looks awfully like, you know, earth and they see a bunch of, you know, people there and no one is, surprised or shocked to see them they're like we're we're aliens basically to you we should y'all should be like freaking out and like or you know where's your leader and everyone just kind of blase and uh uh i remember at one point in time the head stops this little girl on the street and like sits her down on his lap and has a conversation asks her a few questions this is just some little strange girl and he just sits her down on his lap and has a conversation in the street the strange man and like I guess in the fifties, you wouldn't have thought anything about that. Cause you know, it's just, he's a, he's a good person. You know, he's just having a conversation with the kid. You put him on the lap and you have your conversation yeah. and you see him like the serious talk. Yeah. Nothing was, nothing was thought of it. And the first thing in my mind was what the fuck is wrong with this dude? And I get that like, you know, different time and different context. It's just, sometimes it's hard to read how these things are supposed to lay out. Cause like it's 1980. It's not the fifties. Let's first of all, yeah. this guy just got a handful of ass. <laughs> Am I am I supposed to be thinking he's creepy or because the rest of the tone of these scenes play out like he's the kindly old dude? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, I don't know, Enos. Maybe maybe that just wasn't in the script. Maybe you just got took your took your chance while you had yeah. it. Yeah. So going right from into it's hard to interpret relationships. Uh, let's go into Alice and the camp head. What's his name? Is it Steve or Steve. some shit? Yeah. Because he acts awfully controlling and abusive, and the whole like just give me one more like. One more chance. Excuse yeah, one more week very manipulative. Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seems like a complete cocksucker. Yeah. And then he's like, you guys keep getting, like, as soon as people show up, get to work. And next, like, he's like, hard work. And then, like, the next time we see him, he's, like, fucking off having lunch in a diner somewhere, probably getting the good food while everyone's eating the fucking slop out of the tins. Yeah. Back at the camp. And he, he had to go get supplies or something. I don't remember what yeah. he had to go into the town for. And instead, he has to, like, flirt with the lady from the cover of that Super Tramp album. And- yeah. Get his coffee and leave her that 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 whole seventy five cent tip or whatever the fuck it was. Truly, it was. I mean, we're sitting here shitting on a classic, but it's not without cause. No, no, it, it's like I said. It, several points are are bad about it: music, editing, timing on things, some of the character relations. All together, though, you don't you don't hate you don't actively hate the characters the way you do in Halloween. <laughs> uh, you're not necessarily sorry to see him die because you don't spend that much time with them, but you're like, oh. They feel like natural people. Yeah. None of them are actively, you know, hate. Uh, uh, none of them are actively, you know, obnoxious and except for Ned. I mean, he's the only one you're just kind of like, all right, well, I'm kind of glad his ass died. Yeah. And unfortunately, he has to die off screen. I can't even see him get it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, at least he ate shit early on, though. Yeah. So there is that. The, the appearance of Officer Hardass was kind of funny. Who <laughs> was barely able to ride that motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, completely unnecessary. I know that the, I think the, the producers or director or writer, I forget who it was, wasn't real keen on it because they wanted the, they can't, they ever wanted to feel more isolated than that and feel cut off from authority and having the cops show up yep. on the campgrounds kind of undermine that, which, fair enough. Uh, I don't know if that's what undermined it. <laughs> I think just the lack of building any real tension. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't the bad setting. I just, I think the shots lingered too long. But I think if if they cut it like, you know, a normal movie, I think you would have you would have had about an hour's worth of film. Yeah. I mean I mean there's definitely things you could have done to pad it out a little bit as you as you can see in the as the remake, remake. you know. Yeah. They basically told the entire story of the first movie in two, three minutes. Yeah, in the opening credit sequence. So. Yeah, yeah. The the basic plot point. Just the ending, that's all you yeah. needed. We got that. And then they show us a little bit of Baby Jason sneaking up and seeing the dead mom head and 
and then we kick off for we kick off with a remake of uh, of uh, episode two for the next twenty minutes, and then we go into I guess it's an amalgamation of three and four, three and four, yeah. Yeah, he gets his iconic mask, and then they go into a story. Um, it's been a while since I've seen four. So I'm not sure how, been a while how since much I've seen it, all of them. Uh, but yeah, as far as the teens going out to a cabin and stuff, that would be four, yes. Yeah. I like the fact that the token black guy started off basically his first two, you know, interactions were just fucking with his white friends, Reggie. Oh, you want to talk about the snake? Can we talk about the snake? You want to talk about the snake? Let's talk about the snake. Let's talk about making the owner cry. So apparently uh, this was tossed up by, I guess, Savini, right? You know what? At this point in time, it doesn't surprise me. Sure, but uh, a camp experience that he had were at stake. Oh, what well, the idea initially? Yeah, yeah while he was like, because Savini and, and one or two other people uh, actually stayed out at the campsite during the shooting instead mm-hmm. of at the hotel nearby. And I think he, yeah, he got a snake in his room and got scared by it. So he proposed that it'd be a scene to the initial, you know, scare, scare or something yeah. they got to, and, and they actually had the, or the initial danger they have to encounter is the snake and. They just they just fucking machete a real damn snake. Yeah, <laughs> and the owner was on set crying off set off off screen the entire time, like just sobbing as they murdered their pet. <laughs> you think they like you think she knew that that or the he or she knew that that's what was gonna happen to the snake? Or it's like, are you just gonna you're just gonna chase it around a little bit? Or I think you should yeah. be okay. I'll gather him back up. Then you know, Savini's like, ha ha, machete time. I guess. How do you explain that one afterwards? Whoops, like. I don't know. I just like, why, why, if that's your pet and you're worth, it's worth something that means enough to cry with, cry yeah. over to you. Like, why would you get to put in that position? Like, ultimately I I do really want to know how this whole fucking thing, like joking aside, how did this shake out? <laughs> I, I, I imagine that it was a pretty old snake. It was, it was a pretty big snake. So I'd imagine it had some years on it. Maybe some kind of. Con- Still, I don't think I'd be like, Hey, well, my, my pet will die sometime. So why don't you hack it with a fucking machete? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe the snake had cancer and this was its make a wish. It's like, I want to go out in a film. I don't know. <laughs> that, 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 that's my belief. We'll go with that. We're going to believe that this was the snake's make a wish. Yes. All right. <laughs> I want Tom Savini to kill me for real. Fuck. That's my make a wish. <laughs> if I ever get cancer, that's how I want to go. Right? <laughs> we should all be so lucky as ever had severed by an offhand. Because it was Tom Savini that did it, yeah, that did it off off screen, right? Okay. Yeah. I guess it's just like his his prizes for for doing makeup and stuff. He's like, "How much do you want to pay?" I'm like, we'll do this for half, but I get to do these things. <laughs> I want to shoot a bow and arrow. All right, cool. We can do that at a person. <laughs> um, how about ten percent more? Nope, it's got to be a person. So. Do we uh do we need to talk about the uh the spear throat scene, the most iconic scene in the film, basically? It's yeah. gotta be, right? Is it most iconic because it's the coolest death or because it's just because it's Kevin Bacon? Probably because it's Kevin Bacon. It still is awesome though. Yes. So for those of you okay, no, you know what we're talking about, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this. Yeah, the spear throat scene is great. Uh Poor Kevin Bacon having to be crouched underneath the bed with the neck prosthetic for hours while you got Tom Savini, assistant, crammed under there with him. Yeah. And then the pump breaking during the shot and then uh, the assistant having to just grab the tube and blow into it. But it making the bubbles and shit like that, it actually came out pretty good. But yeah. Good on him for thinking fast, mate. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they had one shot to do this. Otherwise, it would have made a whole new latex pros- or prosthetic and everything. That would have been a pain in the, pain in the fucking ass. So. Yep. I mean... <sighs> The movie's makeup effects are what make it fun. Yes. And again, that's Tom Savini's a lot of fun to watch kill people and torture real animals live on screen, apparently, and people. It's part of the contract. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's part of the contract. But the rest of this movie sucks. <laughs> it does. It, it, it's, it's, it's a really bad movie. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think was a Siskel or Ebert, Siskel and Ebert, who like got all like crusady Sis- about it. Yeah, like, Siskel. Like in printed uh, oh, uh, Betsy Palmer's address, so the wrong one to, at that, and tried to have people like write right, her about yeah. it. 
because he was all fucking butthurt about these these films or whatever. It's like man, he fucking went Karen on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely went super fucking Karen. But like, yeah, he uh toured a new one, gave away the ending, and like you said, posted her incorrect address, wanting people to write her and tell her how bad the movie sucked. Yeah, he doesn't like the gratuitous violence and the titties and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing I can really say in closing about the original is just that it's it's a product of Tom's. It's exactly what we said. It's a product of Tom Savini's makeup, and the time was made. And I mean, the end of the flick, like Alice couldn't handle Granny very well. No. She definitely wouldn't be able to handle you know the version of Jason that we all came to know. And I mean, she doesn't last past how much longer in the first movie. Or the second movie, I mean. Like 15 minutes. Is, yeah. Yeah. And like, you're like, oh, you're just saying that because you like modern day stuff and you're, you need flash and excitement. You don't understand the subtlety of it. Like, no, man. Like, one of my favorite horror movies still is the original Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr. That's, that's a damn good movie. Yeah. This was not. This was boring. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came to the same consensus. I was so afraid you're coming here and just roast me a new one for this one. No, no, it, it was terrible. Like I said, I stopped halfway through to go and eat and didn't even microwave anything. I could have, you know, had leftovers, microwave those up. Nah, went and cooked something fresh. Fuck it. So our Friday the 13th, 2009 remake that is basically a sequel to the first movie that incorporates. A little bit of two, three, and four. Two, three, and four, and nods to some other stuff in it. And mm -hmm. originally, the concept was to actually remake five and to start over before any of the supernatural stuff started. Mm -hmm. Have Jason just be, you know, a person again, you know, like you know, Mike Myers. But I don't dislike the supernatural part of it. No. It makes him feel more unstoppable. It makes him feel more unstoppable and it makes it feel uh, more overwhelmingly terrifying. Like you just, there's no, there's no recourse to fight Jason. It's just, gonna, he's just going to keep coming. You know, yeah. you can destroy that body as much as you can, you know, until it rests and comes back at you, but you'll never put it down completely. Yeah. I do like, uh, in this, I do like that they tried to establish a little more that, Jason is not a traveling killer. He is uh territorial yep. kind of survivalist. I like the idea of using the underground tunnels to get around instead of just the popping up behind people thing. Uh, I don't think he necessarily has to be just a, uh, obviously in this one, he's not supernatural. Yeah. You know, he's just a giant hulking dude with deformities and mental trauma from seeing his mom get decapitated. Mm -hmm. I like the Jason with the supernatural powers again. Uh, I don't know where they're going to take this one or where they were going to take this one, I should say, because they were going to do a sequel to it that got shit canned. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I thought when they were dragging his head towards that little chipper at the end, they were going to go for it. But, I'm like, no, fuck it, this is a one shot. Let's just go ahead and, and take care of it now. But they just kind of had him get his brain munched on a little bit, a little bit of a little bottomy action. Yeah. It This movie wasn't bad. It wasn't terrible. It started twice. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the first one where you got the uh, the hitchhiker girl you thought was going to be our main girl. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, well, they just killed her and all of her friends off in the beginning. Okay, he's got the burlap sack. Okay, I guess this is just our our quick remake of two. Or you know, what's it now? Yeah. Oh, now goes to two. And then we get... Uh, then we find out that girl actually is alive. So we didn't we didn't kill our our first girl after all like we did. Yeah. Uh, which I think was another, there was another one of these movies where some people are hiking in the woods and they come across like the brother from someone from another movie who had gone missing. So I think that was probably a callback to that when we get the dude from Supernatural showing up. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of this that felt like a CW drama. And some of this was the most Michael Bay shit you've ever seen in your life. Super Bay. Yeah, man. The uh the the topless wakeboarding was the most bay thing I've ever seen. Besides the dialogue in the sex scene. Yeah, yeah. I, the only thing that could have made that's the 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 wakeboarding more bay is if Rocky Like a Hurricane played while the Blue Angels flew overhead. 
So let's talk about the first group of kids, the ones who, uh, the what the ones the sister was a part of. When we got burlap sack Jason. Mm-hmm. First of all, <clears throat> I'm gonna point out a couple of things about the first deaths or whatever. The the girl in the sleeping bag. Like I like the callback to the sleeping bag death because Jason slamming that girl against the tree with the sleeping bag is one of the coolest deaths ever. Yes. Uh, I gotta say, because like at one point in time at the end, you know, the bag, the, the sleeping bag finally rips from being burnt and she falls out all smoldering and shit. Like, wouldn't that, that thing, like that nylon, had gone up and at least been like tear apartable, like long before she burnt alive? Yeah. Like she probably would have been burned up, you know, severe burns, but especially with that stuff sticking to her oh, skin, yeah. I yeah, imagine. Definitely. But alive, right? You would think. Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed a little silly. Uh, and then also, you know, dude that gets the bear trap in the leg. Like, I'm saying Charlie Day survived and got out of one. I think this guy can manage. So. Yeah. It, it, he's trying to pull his leg out instead of pulling it apart. Like, you would imagine that he would be able to pull it apart, especially with You're the not an animal. Going. You have thumbs. You can pull these things apart. Yeah. Especially with your adrenaline going. If moms can lift cars off their kids. Yeah, silly. Although he is the one that reminds me the most of an 80s actor because he looks like a cross between Scott Bayo and uh, <clears throat> uh, Ralph Macchio, I think. Yeah. He just looks like that actor looks so 80s. Whatever the hell his name is. So our main douchebag, the one whose house they're hanging out with at this place, uh, I forget the actor, something Van Winkle. The character just kept reminding me of like a, a, a more douchey version of Dennis Reynolds. Yeah. Like that's the vibe I kept getting. Like just those sociopathic tendencies were like right under the surface. And like, I think you could have made a great horror movie where it turned out he was the one killing his friends for like, he went and killed his Asian buddy for like, you know, breaking the chair, for breaking the chair. And, uh, uh, what was the character's name? Chewy or something. Chewy. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's just little things like that. He just snaps because he's like a neat freak and you know, sociopathic yeah. and, I am a golden God. Like just completely snaps or whatever. That's what we need. Like, you know, we got like the bright burn. It's like, what if Superman was evil? Like we don't even have to push it that far with Dennis. We just like, what if we just took it a little bit farther with Dennis Reynolds? We actually knew, you know, for sure he was a serial killer yeah. sociopath and that it wasn't just hinted at. <laughs> yeah. Cause he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then, uh, with the scene with them taking the gas down to the boat and he's like, don't, don't fucking touch my boat. Oh yeah. Super. Super sociopath. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a couple of things. Like, I don't dislike. All right. The guys who made this remake, they were very much into Jason, Freddy. And I think the writers, I think Jason versus Freddy was their one of their first credits. Yeah. Uh, it's not a bad film. It does justice to Jason. It doesn't ever make fun of him. It's treated well. They don't go beyond the bounds of what the character is or should be. We don't spend a ton of time trying to sympathize with him as a kid. We get the one scene of him seeing his mother a little bit, but they do that very quickly. We yeah. don't overindulge for 20 minutes like Rob or fucking 45 minutes like Rob Zimmer, however the hell long it was as a child. Uh, we got to hang out with Mike Myers. This this movie does a lot of stuff well where this movie is is boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt that the the reboot, remake, reimagining uh did a lot more to create the tension that wasn't felt in the original. I don't uh, The CW drama feelings for it just kind of, it still was, it ruined all that for me. It, none of these movies are as good at jo- as John Carpenter creating it. No, 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 not at all. But I'm just saying that the tension was built better in <clears throat> the remake than the original. Uh, okay. Maybe, but now that we're good, <laughs> I mean, I think Jason is one of those characters that's better in pop culture mythos than he is actually sitting down and watching some of these damn movies. Yeah. I mean, like four and six are, are great camp fun. And they're what we think of when we think of, you know, Jason, Jason. one and two are something you have to get through to say you've seen them. Mm -hmm. Uh, By today's standards, they're just not interesting. This was good. Because it condensed down a bunch of stuff that was unnecessary in the originals. And they, you know, they had the obnoxious characters. They had the likable characters. You know, you, you, the guy gets his sister back in the end. Mm-hmm. And we have a nice little happy ending. I, I imagine, man, like if I was in high school and this one came out, I would be, I would love it. Probably the same way I love Jason versus Freddy. Yeah. I don't, though. <laughs> 
I had, I had forgot it. I, I had completely forgotten it existed. Um, like again, Jason versus Freddy, as far as remakes go, and the um, the Arley Army, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. those are the ones that stick out to me. I mean, I know it's it's not a I know I know Jason versus Freddy isn't remake. It's just the when we got our old school seventies and eighties slasher characters got their their later two thousand movies when we were in high school. You know yeah. what I mean? Those stick out to me. This one, you know, was we were in college when this came out. That just just nothing. I don't I didn't remember it existed. And I think the reason is because it's um, awfully forgettable. It is. It's not bad, but it's not spectacular or anything. No. It's the same Jason movie you've seen, if you've seen any of them. So nothing new here. And there was no kills that stuck out. Because like when you go to, this, go to these movies, you're going to see the kills. Yes. And the only one that mm-hmm. stuck out to me was the girl under the pier. She just got caught by the damn boat, which was hilarious. Yeah. And then she was hiding under the pier and he just stabs yeah, right there. And she turns into just like a popsicle and pulls her out. And we get the Katrina's tit shot before she flunk, falls right back into the water. That was funny. I would they I would I wish they would just played up the fact that it was comedic and just played a little bit lighter music instead of the the dun 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 kind of sting. Yeah. Just just go go with it. It's accept who you are, except this is camp. You can't play him seriously. It's gone too far. Yeah. It's, if, I feel like I feel like Robert England's the only one who can go back and forth between ridiculous and camp. I don't understand why they marketed this as a remake. I get why they didn't do a direct remake of the original movie. Because now Jason is a part of the pop culture zeitgeist, you know? Or he's he's part of the the <clears throat> he's part of the pop culture conscious. And if you are someone who's young, younger than us. I mean, we, again, we were born after the th- first three movies were already out. So you go with someone who was born in the nineties or the two thousands and they're, you know, they know of Jason, what, you know, just, they know about him, you know, from, from pop culture references and stuff. Yeah. And it's always been the mask. If you go see that movie and you're like, where the fuck is Jason? All I'm seeing is hands this entire time. Shit. It's the fucking mom. It's this curly haired bitch in a fucking sweater. Like they'd be pissed. Yeah. Super pissed. Royally pissed. I get why they did what they did. And I guess it was kind of smart to just like, okay, well, the first two movies were almost, you know, unwatchable, unwatchable. So let's just get through those really quickly, essentially. And yeah, we'll, we'll tie in this brother thing from this movie over here, but the sister will still be alive. And we'll take the, the partying teenagers from the fourth movie, but let's cut the fucking little kid out of the movie. Yeah. And yeah. Adrian King, uh, Apparently they had contacted her initially to have a cameo in the remake and then contacted her afterwards. It was like, Oh, we don't want any of the, we don't want any of the original members in the, in the remake. Or whatever. Yeah. But it's, I think it would have been a great opportunity to have her play Mrs. Voorhees in that opening credit sequence. You know, yeah. that would have been, that would have been hilarious. Yeah. A nice little Easter egg, a little fan servicey thing. Well guys, suffice to say, this is not our favorite of the horror film uh, franchises. I am much more of a Freddy Krueger person and Nightmare on Elm Street man. And I've never seen the remake for that because I don't want to. I will for this show, but like, I don't like the idea of Freddy Krueger being played as an outright pedophile because he wasn't a fucking pedophile. Like that's, that's yeah. Something the modern thing is kind of leaned into, you know, so far we've gotten too good, but like the, this remake is Isn't bad. It's not bad. It's just not really that memorable. And it's better than uh, it's better than the first movie, you know, in this series, which is has memorable scenes. This all right, the original has more memorable scenes in it than the remake does. Yes. The throat uh, and Betsy Palmer, much more memorable. Alice is more memorable as uh, mm-hmm. actually well. most of the characters are more memorable. Just. The 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 girl uh, uh, who sleeps with uh, Kevin Bacon doing her again her Elizabeth Taylor impersonation that stood out to me the the way they interacted with each other it was it was cute it was fun like the only the closest level they got to that as far as feeling like these people were actually friends and had a good time together in the remake was whenever uh, Chewie busts out the bong and he's talking to his buddies like he's Lawrence like, yeah, he's like Lawrence like it's like you cheated on me last night with a bowl. It's like, no, baby, it wasn't, it wasn't true. It wasn't true. I saw it. I saw it. A bull. I'm trying to think of a way to wrap it up, but like, I'm mostly just, 
I'm fried from having to sit through this again. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Reanimated. That was the 1980 Friday the 13th compared to the 2009 sequel slash remake of the first kind of four movies sort of thing. Yeah, this one was kind of weird and kind of difficult to do. I thought we were going to sit down and watch like the first, like all of the classic movies to be able to get everything that's on in this. But um, there's tons of stuff we miss as far as little throwbacks to the old movies that were in here. Um, Watch it at least once. Go watch the original at least once to say you've done it and you've put in your time. But it's a product of its time. Uh, Its effectiveness was a product of the time. You should go watch it just to see Tom Savini's uh, makeup effects in it. Those are always enjoyable and they still hold up. But outside of that, it was attempting to do what John Carpenter did. It it tried to ape uh, Halloween in a lot of ways. And it just was done with a less talented hand that shows in every frame of this film. Uh, I think we're coming up and doing Krampus and Child's Play for December. We're going to do the next reanimated we're going to do is going to be Child's Play, I think. Yeah. And then uh, the other, we're going to do another Christmas special we'll do with Krampus just as a standalone movie. We don't have anything to compare it yeah. to. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. And um, so how do you mother for me? <laughs>